everybody, it's Laura. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Today I have a layout that I made using the Shimmers July Color Kits collection. This kit is so full of bright, beautiful colors. I was really excited to start working with it. I'm going to create a mixed media background. I'm doing something a little different from usual, not that different, but I thought I would try using modeling paste. And then instead of just leaving it as is, I would add some white embossing powder. And that makes a little bit more of a resist than if I just had the modeling paste. To create my background, I started with a piece of white cardstock. This is 120 pound smooth cardstock. I've covered it with some Liquitex gesso. And then I use a stencil that I absolutely love. It's a dress my craft stencil called Splatter with Lines. It's an older stencil. I tried to find it online because I thought I love this stencil so much I should probably try to get another one, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So I'm gonna have to be really careful with this stencil. And I don't usually buy two of each stencil, but this stencil has a lot of little pieces. It's very intricate. And some of them have gotten bent up over the years. So that's why I wanted to get another one. And then I added some white embossing powder over the top and then I heat embossed it. Now I am taking the coloring sheet that comes in this month's kit and I'm going to use all of the paints that we received and I'm going to paint the entire sheet in. I started with the lemons and for the lemons I used a color splash called Squeeze the Day and a coloring is called No Yoking and I try to use both of those colors to create a little bit of variation in the color. It's a little hard with yellows to show lights and darks since it's such a light color but I gave it my best shot and I think that by adding layers of color and using the two different colors of yellow and then also by leaving some of the areas white and not colored in it helps to make the lemons look a little more realistic to color in the leaf on the lemon and all the other leaves that are on this coloring sheet i use a shimmers called evergreen I not only used the color evergreen by itself, but I also mix it with those two different colors of yellow to create a number of different shades to give the leaves some variation. And I'm not going to include the footage of me painting this entire page. It just would be way too much footage. And this video is already a little bit longer than most of my videos. So I wanted to give you an example of painting in the lemons and then also of painting in a strawberry. For the strawberry, I use a creamies called Good Old Summertime and a shimmers called Berry Smart. And all five of the colors that I've mentioned so far, these are the colors that are part of the July kit. So you receive them if you order the bundle kit. I also use one other color. This is a shimmers called Buddy's Favorite Color. And we got that recently in a monthly kit. If you look to the left-hand side of the coloring sheet, you can see that I have one of the die-cut strawberries. I thought that that would really help me to make decisions on how I was going to paint my sheet of strawberries in, and I did find it very helpful. I'm trying to show the curve of the strawberry by putting some darker colors in along the edges and then leaving the center part a little bit lighter. And then I used some of the yellow paint that was left on the palette, and I added little touches of yellow to the strawberry very much like the die cut piece. And I'm going to fussy cut out all of those images. I use the lemons on this page and I use the strawberries on another layout. And I make sure that the paper is totally dry before I attempt to cut out those images because you can damage the paper if the paper is wet and you try to cut it. Now I'm going back to work on my background. I have my resist stenciled background that I created and I'm going to be using two different shimmers paints to make this background. I'm starting here with a colorings called Well Blue Me Down. I thought that this combination of the blues with the yellows and the greens that are in the lemons would be a nice bright summery color palette. And I'm using my very favorite method of spreading the color which is the packaging technique. And I'm using lots of water to move the color around. I really like the way the grid is really visible because of the embossing powder. It really helps to create a resist that's really noticeable. If I had used modeling paste, the modeling paste takes on some of the color that you apply, but the resist does take on a little bit of the color, but a lot less. And so I was really glad that you could see the grid lines and the splatter areas that are in this stencil. 
in between each application of color, I use my heat tool to dry the paint. And this way, when I add more paint, it builds up the color rather than just mixing with the color. And then, oh my goodness, I couldn't believe it. I accidentally knocked over all of the paint onto my layout. My daughter happened to be in the room and she was trying to help me. And I was just thinking, I can't believe that this whole thing is ruined. But I was so happy to see that it really wasn't too hard to clean up the layout. And I credit that to the layer of gesso on the cardstock. I was able to mop up some of the color. And then I also was able to get a lot of the paint back in the paint jar, which was also very important to me. And then I just began adding more color. You could see that the lines where I dropped the paint are a little bit blurred, but I'm just going to go back in and add a little bit more paint over the top and that disappears. So what I thought was a horrible tragedy when it first happened, just took a few minutes to clean up and I was able to continue on and finish my layout. My heat tool really helped me to dry up those areas that got wet. The only thing that ended up being a little bit of a problem in the end was that this whole experience with spilling the paint and then using water to sop up the paint, it made the background a little bit more warped than I would like. And then because I used embossing powder on the background, I couldn't run it through my laminator or it would ruin the penciling. And trust me, I've tried it before. It is not a good idea to put anything that is heat embossed through your laminating machine but it ended up being fine. It wasn't super wavy once the paper dried fully. And then once I put it in a page protector, you won't even notice that it's a little wavy. But now I'm adding a second color of blue. This is a Vibes called Blue Jeans. I started off by just adding some splatters and you could see that I added lots of splatters of the Well Blue Me Down to the background as well. At first, I wasn't sure that I wanted to add a whole lot of this color, but once I added the splatters, I thought that the combination of the kind of turquoise color and the royal blue looking shade was a good combination. So then I got a little bit more brave and I started adding more of the vibes to the background. I continued using the packaging technique, but I found myself also spraying a little bit right onto the layout, which is something that I don't do a lot, but I wanted there to be some areas that had more concentrated color. And then I also used the packaging to smush down those sprayed areas. I like the way the packaging technique makes an edge that's very natural looking. And I feel like whenever I try to do that with a brush, it doesn't look as natural as I would want it to be. And I think that's what makes me constantly use the plastic to apply the color. Color. And here you can see that I'm going back with a whole bunch more splatters. I wanted there to be a lot of splatters on this layout. I wanted the background to be a little bit more messy than some of the backgrounds that I make with the mixed media. I mean, I guess they're all a little bit messy, but I was consciously thinking that this would look better if it had a little bit more splattering and messiness to it. Another thing that I was thinking about as I was making this background was how transparent I wanted the color to be. Did I want the color to be very solid on the background or did I want there to be a lot of white areas in between? And I wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted. So I decided that I was going to have some areas of white and then some areas that had a lot of pigment on them. And in the end, I think it turned out okay. I knew that in the center area of this large area of color that I'm making, I was going to put my photo. So I knew that that would be covered up for the most part. So I didn't spend too much time on that part. And then I grabbed my gesso and my sponge that I've had for, I don't know, 30 years. And I used it to dab a little bit of white gesso on the background. And this is in part helping me to clean up some of that spill from earlier, but it's also helping me to tone down some of the splatters that I thought were a little bit much that kind of went astray on the background. Next, I wanna add some stamping to the background. I'm using some Stays On ink in Jet Black, and I'm using a few stamps that I have in my stash. At first, I was kind of frustrated because I misplaced the baggie that I have where I keep my most used stamps, and that kind of forced me to branch out a little bit and use some stamps that I don't normally use. So there was kind of a grid stamp. I used that on the background. I didn't even realize that I had that stamp. 
and then I used a circle stamp that I had and stamped a couple of circles in the background. And then finally, I picked out this large script stamp. This used to be mounted on a piece of wood, but I took it off of the wood and that helps me to be able to curve it a little bit and use it in the background. I don't want to use the entire stamp. I just want to use little pieces of it in the background. And then I went back with another round of those circles. So in the end, it was a good thing that I couldn't find those stamps because I was able to look through my stamps and find others that I probably should be using more often. I buy a lot of rubber stamps from a place near me that has them for 25 cents. They're used and I have been getting way too many stamps, so I should really try to get some use out of them. And lately, I've started to get a little bit better at this. I remembered before the end of the video to tell you that when you place an order with Shimmers Paints, if you use my name in the comments, you'll receive a free gift. For some reason, I generally forget to mention that until the video is almost over. Now I'm adding some embellishments to the layout and I start out with all of those pieces that I fussy cut from the coloring sheet. As I had mentioned, I'm going to use all of the lemons and I also use the flowers from that sheet. I have three clusters on the page. I always try to make one noticeably bigger. So I have that one on the lower part of the layout. And I'm also working in all of the single leaves that were on that coloring sheet. I'm also incorporating some of the die cuts from the ephemera pack. There was a heart, and so I'm fussy cutting off the white border, and I'm going to use that heart in a little while. Right now I have it in the cluster at the top. I'm going to change that up a little bit. Well, my friend Sue was nice enough to text me when she found some great scrapbooking bargains at a nearby 99 cent store. So she found these Heidi Swap resist letters and I was on vacation when she contacted me about it. But when I got back, I went over there and they still had four packs left. They have little resist circles on them and I thought that this would be great to use with the Shimmers paints. So I'm going to call this layout I Love Candy. My daughter is in a candy shop in this photo in this really beautiful, cute, like touristy candy shop in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And it was decorated so beautifully and I love the color scheme and I thought it went so nicely with the color scheme of this July kit. I thought that the layout could use a few more embellishments. So I took a look at the sticker sheet and I saw some great sentiments. There is one that says enjoy, one that says happy, and one that says sweet. And everything is coordinated. So they all went very nicely with the color scheme on the page. There was also a postmark and I wanted to incorporate that into the cluster in the upper left hand corner. I took all four of these stickers and I first attached them down to some thick white cardstock. This will help me to move them around. And I also want to pop them up on some foam. So I always like to reinforce things that I pop up on foam. So I have two of them in the main cluster and then I put one of them in the smaller cluster. And then I was waiting until I had made more of the layout to decide which pattern paper I wanted to mount the photo on. I knew I wanted to use either the yellow or the pink. And I ended up thinking that the pink would be a little bit better because there was a little bit less pink on the page. And then I gutted the center of that mat because I know that I'm going to want to use every little bit of this pink paper on my layout. And then I attached it down to the photo. And then I just used whatever ink was left on my pink dauber and I inked the edges of my mat. Then I'm going to mat it one more time on some black paper. I'm just going to have a really, really thin border of black around the outside. I just thought that that would help the photo to stand out a little bit. These are those resist letters that I chose for my title. I'm going to use all five of the colors that are in the kit to paint each of them a different color. Well, actually, I paint the I and the Y the same color, and then I use the other four colors, and I paint the remainder of the letters with those. For the I and the Y, I used good old summertime. For the C, I used evergreen. For the A, I used no yoking. <laughs> the N was very smart and the D was squeeze the day. And at first when I was painting the N, it didn't look like it was going to take the color, but in the end it looks the same as all the rest. And I really like that little bit of resist on the letters. Uh, now I'm popping up my photo on some foam. Just wanted to give it a little bit of emphasis by popping it up. 
I added ATG adhesive to the back, which means that I'm going to have to go back and glue it down with some wet glue because the ATG adhesive won't hold forever. And then I had to move the cluster on the right hand side so that I could put my photo in place. I always take a picture of my layout once I'm happy with the way I have the embellishments placed just in case I do have to move anything. I definitely won't remember where I had the embellishments. So taking a picture really helps. And then I used whatever ink was left on my yellow dauber and I inked the edge of that yellow heart. And that of course is part of the title. And my daughter, Julia, she absolutely loves candy. She likes the sugary types where I am more of a chocolate person, but she really likes all of those candies that are all different colors. And so I was thinking that this would be a really great layout for her. It really reminds me of all those different colored candies that she loves to eat. And at the time that this picture was taken, probably until present day, but I remember her being obsessed with those candy fruit slices. And that was another reason that I thought that these lemons went really well with the page. And now that I have most of the elements on the page approximately where I want them to go, I am starting to attach everything down. I don't show all the footage of attaching everything down because it takes a little bit of time and I don't want the video to be extremely long. But I do want to mention that I use a little bit of fun foam behind all five of the pink flowers that are on the layout. That gives them a little bit of dimension. And then I also put some foam behind the three sentiments that I have on the page and that everything else is attached directly down to the layout. For the larger pink flower on the right hand side of the layout, I added some foam to the back to pop it up, but then I realized that part of it is going to be sitting on top of the photo. So I had to go back and trim some of that foam away so that it would sit correctly on top of the photo and still have some dimension. And then I added some foam to that smaller flower, but I tucked that one underneath the larger one. And then I continued around to the rest of the page and began attaching everything else down. When I was looking at the sticker sheet, I saw there were some very, very tiny butterflies on one of the stickers. Actually, there was more than one sticker that had butterflies. I got two of the butterflies from this sticker. I once again attach it down to a piece of white cardstock and then I fussy cut out those two tiny butterflies and I was glad that they were nice and tiny because the other elements on the page are on the larger side so I like the difference in scale of those smaller butterflies and then off camera I fussy cut out a third very tiny butterfly from another sticker and then I put them at the bottom of the layout but I'm going to return to those in a moment first I wanted to add some photo corners to my picture and I used my punch that you see to the right hand side of my map. That's an EK success punch. I attached those down and then I went back to the butterflies. I inked the edges of the butterflies with my pink dauber. And then I spread those three butterflies out. I was going to put one in each of the clusters, but I decided that I was going to put the two larger ones in the two larger clusters by the photo. And then I put that smallest one on the title. I thought it would get lost in the third cluster because it is so tiny. And I had the little butterfly in the third cluster temporarily, but I think you could see it was just way too small. I also thought of putting it in the center of the heart, but then I changed my mind and decided to put it on the D in the word candy. And I think that it is very noticeable there because the letter D is yellow. I wanted to add some kind of a border to the outside of the layout, so I decided to add a black cardstock border. I cut the background down just a little bit, just enough to allow the border to show, and then I put a whole lot of ATG adhesive on the back of the background. That helps to make the wavy paper wave a little bit less once it's attached down to the piece of black cardstock. I added a couple of jewels to the photo quarters and the heart and the layout is complete and here are close-ups. I know this was a long video. I really appreciate you watching and sticking with me until the very end. I really hope that you enjoyed watching. I really had a lot of fun creating this layout. In the description box is a link to the Shimmers website. You can check out the beautiful color kits collections. You can also check out all of the beautiful individual paints that they have available. Thank you again so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll see you again soon. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.